Justin here, and if you've got REI Reply and you want to start getting one to seven motivated seller leads a day like I do, or if you don't have REI Reply and you would like to have REI Reply and have it making for you one to seven leads every day like I have, then here's an opportunity for you. I will build out your REI Reply to look just like mine. In fact, I will load for sell by owner data into it for you as well, and I will return it to you making one to seven leads every single day and also filtering out all the bad ones and like kind of showing you the good ones right here on a silver platter all right if that sounds good to you you know what to do see you on the inside bye-bye i'm not going to do the final exam tonight but we're going to ask questions this is the pre-exam pre-exam test all right <laughs> does anybody ever remember taking the psat all right or the PACT, that's the practice ACT. That when you're in high school or the practice SAT, well, this is the practice final exam for the transaction engineer course. And go into the first question. Dun, 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 dun. All right, you guys nervous about this? You gonna you gonna are you, you gonna do okay on the practice test? You gonna flunk it? How, what, what have you learned this summer? I bet you've learned more than you think. And I know summer's not over. We're about to get into it more even after this. You're in some, for some of you, you're in summer school again. <laughs> and here is the first question on the test, the practice test. What is the number one reason a creative real estate investor uses various acquisition strategies? All right. The multiple choice here is maximize rental income. Minimize renovation costs, C, generate quick profits, or D, build long-term equity. Hmm. What do you think? What is the answer? What is the answer? Put it in the chat. What do you think? What do you think the answer will be? The correct answer. What is the number one reason a creative real estate investor uses various acquisition strategies? Why are you, why are you guys getting involved in this? A, maximize rental income. B, minimize renovation costs. C, generate quick profits. Or D, build long-term equity. Hmm. Okay. Okay. You guys, I know there's a little delay here on the uh, on the actual uh, live stream here. Tyree says D. DC says D. Okay. Time's up. Time's up. The correct answer is D. It could also be C and D. I will throw that out there, okay? It could be C and D. Because you could do it for quick profits, right? What if you're assigning? Your exit strategy is assignment, okay? Definitely, definitely then a quick profit deal, okay? So, that's see you got to think about this. So it's kind of tricky, kind of tricky, tricky. But good answer. If you said D, that's the right answer. Okay. All right. So let's um, let's go to the next question here. Next question. And here it is. Which strategy focuses on renovating and reselling properties for a profit? Buy and hold. A buy and hold. B. Hoteling. C, the 1031 exchange. Or D, short-term rental. Which strategy focuses on renovating and reselling property properties for a profit? Which strategy focuses on renovating and reselling properties for a profit? Buy and hold, that's A. B, hoteling. C, 1031 exchange or D short term rental this is tricky or is it all right all right interesting huh all right which strategy focuses on renovating and reselling properties for a profit all right <clears throat> that sounds like fix and flip but that wasn't one of the answers Okay, fix and flip was not one of the answers. So what do we say? A lot of answers coming in here in the chat. <laughs> uh, thank you, Rick. He said, uh, answer is E. Justin is awesome. Hey, 
You know what? That's always the right answer, Rick. You know, 10, 10 million bonus points for you, sir. All right. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Love you a bunch. All right. A lot of folks here in the chat room are saying B, wholetailing is the answer. And you would be correct. Could, uh, let me ask you this question though. So congratulations if you said B. Um, if you said C and B, you might still be correct. Could you make quick, uh, which could you do renovations and reselling and in a 1031 exchange scenario? Could you do it maybe in a, in your, in your, you know, uh, your self-directed Roth IRA? I, I don't know. All right. I'm just throwing that out there. Right, think about it. Think about it. Okay. So it, it might be possible to, to do uh, something pretty quick in, in that, in that line of exit strategy. Okay, I'm just throwing that out there as for instance. All right, so but if you said B, good job. B is the the, the real true, the true answer there. Okay, all right. Now number three, the question number three, the next question. Here we go. All right, the 1031 exchange strategy allows investors to a sell properties without paying capital gains taxes. B acquire properties with seller financing, C, rent out properties to government subsidized tenants, or D, develop vacant land for new construction. Hmm. 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 What do we do? What do we do? What are you going to do? That's right. What are you going to do? 1031 exchange strategy allows investors to A. Sell properties without paying capital gains taxes. B. Acquire properties with seller financing. C. Rent out properties to government subsidized tenants. Or D. Develop vacant land for new construction. All right. Time's up. Time's up. We do have some answers here in the chat room. And it looks like we have a general consensus that A is the answer. That a 1031 exchange strategy allows investors to A, sell properties without paying capital gains taxes. All right. <laughs> we have uh, someone that says C, rent out properties to government subsidized tenants. Okay. Um, I think we have an A in here as well, maybe. Uh, maybe we have a B. Um, yeah, the correct answer is A. A, sell the properties without paying capital gains taxes. In a 1031 exchange, the taxes are not avoided, but what do we call it? In a 1031 exchange, what, are, what is happening to the taxes? They're not being avoided. Somebody put it in the chat. They're being what? All right. This is a bonus question. Uh, has anybody got a bonus uh, answer for the bonus question? A bonus answer. <laughs> All right. Anybody got a bonus answer? Okay. The taxes aren't being avoided. They're being deferred. Correct. Correct. Uncle Sam ain't going to forget about it. He's always going to want his. Or theirs. Okay, whatever. <laughs> deferred. Yes. You guys are right. Okay. All right. Let's do the next question. The next question on the board, please. And here we go. Which strategy involves finding distressed properties and assigning the purchase contract to another buyer? A, wholetailing. B, seller finance. C, lease option assignment. Or D, assisted living conversion. Hmm. Hmm. Which strategy involves finding distressed properties and assigning the purchase contract to another buyer? See, I would say wholesaling, but that's not an answer. Hoteling, A, hoteling, B, seller finance, C, lease option assignment, D, assisted living conversion. Hmm. See, I'm telling you, this is tricky. 
See, isn't this tricky? Wow, you gotta think about this one, man. You gotta think on this one. Y'all are jumping on it now. Woohoohoo! You guys are jumping on it. Okay, time's up. Time's up. Which strategy involves finding distressed properties and assigning the purchase contract to another buyer? The correct answer is A. All right? Wholetailing. You're going to find a distressed property. You're going to clean it up a little bit. You're going to do a little bit of work to it. And then you're going to sell it or assign it to another buyer. Okay. All wholetailing. Could it be C? That was a popular alternate response in the chat. Lease option assignment. It could also be C. Traditionally, lease options are pretty houses. Okay. So... In this question, it's asking about finding a distressed property and assigning the purchase contract to another buyer. So it's kind of a dumb question, but yes, A or C, I would have accepted as correct answers. I would not have accepted B or D. They would have been wrong answers. Okay, so if you were saying A or C, that would have been right. All right, so how'd you do? Did you do pretty good? All right, uh, lease option assignments, some of you were saying... Okay, yeah, could be, could be. You could do that on an ugly house. Yeah, you could. Um, but mostly uh, it feels like wholetailing. If you got in there, you got a property under contract, you went in, you cleaned it up a little bit, you sold the contract, you know, for more money. That sounds sounds like that, that could be more fitting too. These, these are good. These are dumb questions, <laughs> but I'm glad we're asking them because they kind of make us think in a way. All right. All right, so here we go. Let's let's do the next question. All right, the next question coming up now. All right, here we go. What is the primary advantage of short-term rentals compared to long-term rentals? A. Higher rental income potential. B. Lower vacancy rate. C. Long-term equity growth. Or D, lower maintenance costs? Hmm. Hmm. What is the primary advantage of short-term rentals? Hmm. Is it higher rental income? Is it lower vacancy rates? Is it long-term equity growth? Or is it lower maintenance costs? What is the primary advantage of a short-term rental as compared to a long-term rental? All right. You guys have nailed this one. Good job. Good job. You guys have nailed this one. I love this. It's so much fun. Yeah, it seems to me like the correct answer to this one would be A, higher rental income potential. Good job. So short-term rentals would not be a lower vacancy rate. A long-term equity growth, that would not be an advantage that short-term rentals would have over long-term rentals necessarily. Okay, And D, lower maintenance costs, eh, probably higher maintenance costs on a short-term rental. All right. So A is, the, A is the best answer here. All right. All right. So it's making you think a little bit. Making you think. All right. Good. Making you think. All right. Let's jump into the next question. Next question here. Here we go. What does the development and new construction strategy involve? A, buying properties for long-term rental income. B, finding distressed properties for quick flips. C, constructing new buildings or renovating existing structures. D, converting single-family residences into assisted living facilities. Hmm. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a good one, too. What does the development and new construction strategy involve? Buying properties for long-term rental income. Oh. Buying distressed properties for flips. Constructing new buildings or renovating existing structures. Converting single family residences into assisted living facilities. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. 
Okay. All right. All right. This one here really makes you think here. And we've got quite a few answers here that have been put in the chat. Thank you, everybody, for participating. I want to say thank you one more time. You're so special to me. I really appreciate you spending time with me on Wednesday night and, you know, sharing some sharing some of your brain power with me. And we're learning together here, all right? But um, definitely these are some making me think a little bit. <clears throat> some of these are making my head smoke a little bit, you know. What does the development and new construction strategy involve? And a lot of you here have said in the chat, uh, C, we have a C and a D, but we have a C. It looks like, and the answer to C is constructing new buildings or renovating existing structures. That is the correct answer in its truest form. That is correct. So if you put down there C, then you are correct. Could it be D? Well, you could. It's all semantics at this point. But yeah, D is a completely separate exit strategy. All right. When we talk about development and new construction strategy, what we're really referring to is uh, most of the time, in my experience, we are referring to homes that are two bedroom that could be expanded to three bedroom. So we're doing what's called a build out or we're adding on to the original footprint of the property. OK, so we're developing new new space in this house. All right. And then um, also it can be a tear down and rebuild. In some places in the country, in some neighborhoods, it makes sense to tear down an existing structure and then replace it with a nicer, larger, more modern structure. And it will yield a higher dollar return for the investor involved, all right? So tear down and rebuild or build outs. Build outs is when you're adding on to the footprint of the property. And a tear down and rebuild, of course, is when you're tearing down and rebuilding. All right. So that's really what that's referring to. Now, let's go on to the next question. Good job, everybody. Good job. All right. Next question here. And we're going to pop in right now. This one was popular in my private coaching chat room this week. This one was a popular discussion one day. And so here it is. Master leasehold involves A, Owning property outright, B, subleasing a property to tenants, C, selling a property with financing provided by the seller, or D, offering seller financing to potential buyers. The master leasehold. The master leasehold. Yeah, this was a popular topic this week in my chat room because... This is an advanced maneuver in my in my lease options course. I've got a lease options package at realestatewholesalersclub.com. And in it, I've got an advanced maneuvers workshop that we just did. And I talk about several advanced maneuvers and the master leasehold is one of them. So the light switch went on for some folks this week on that. And that was kind of cool. That's kind of cool when that happens. All right. So the master leasehold, is it A? No, it does not and consist of owning property outright. Okay, you're you're getting a lease, a master lease. Is it B? Everybody here in the chat already knows it's B subleasing a property to tenants. All right, great. Yeah, that's right. A master lease allows you to sublet. Here's why it was popular in the chat this week. There's a nurse. That's a travel nurse, or he's a nurse that knows travel nurses that come to the facility that he works at, and a lot. And so his idea was, is why don't I rent a place nearby, furnish it out a little, and then sell it as short-term, meaning six months rentals, instead of 12 months rentals, and make it furnished and make it for the folks that are travel nurses coming into town and I'll sublet the place. If you can get a master lease and you can charge more money, see, because you're offering short-term lease, you're offering furnished, you're offering some amenities, you're offering it close to the hospital, you're offering it, you know, what they need, what, you know, maybe some special things, you know, whatever he can think of as a, as an industry expert in the medical field. All right. I don't know, but you can charge more money that way because this is a special kind of six-month sublease. Great idea. Yeah, master leasehold. 
Master Leasehold. All right. Yes, sir. -y. Okay. How you doing? Are you doing pretty good? Are you answering these questions so far? Pretty good. Are you getting them right? Are you getting them wrong? Okay. Well, let's get right back to the, uh, let's get right back to the, the, um, the questions right after this short break. Yeah, it's pretty simple. You can get involved in creating seller leads. It's pretty easy. I'll show you how to do it. Actually, at realestatewholesellersclub.com, I spend less than $200 a month and I get leads every single day that I talk to for people who are ready to do something creative with me. And when you get on the phone with one, you're going to want to know what to say. All right. And there's some scripts that you can study and all of this wonderful stuff. But when it comes down to it, you got to know how to answer the big questions, the stalls, and the objections. And that's what these 70 flashcards are about because you know you'll never get over that gut-wrenching feeling of knowing you had a motivated homeowner on the on the line they were talking to you about this proposition of something creative and then they asked a question you didn't know the answer to and you just flat blew it blew it ouch ouch it really hurts it stings man and you know what? Some of you keep doing it over and over and over and over and over again until you decide, hey, maybe I'm just not good with this phone stuff and I'm just not going to do it now. And then guess what? You just become a perpetual forever student. Don't do that. When the words are right here, I have studied and studied and stayed up all night. I have done uh, all of the work for you and I put all the answers right here and not just my answers that I use. They're, they're in here too, but there's everybody else's answers that I've learned and stolen and made mine and... Okay, because there's nothing new under the sun. We're all saying the same type stuff. So put these in your brain. Stuff them in there. <clears throat> so that when you need the answers, you have them. Okay, I'm selling these at realestatewholesellersclub.com. How much is it worth? I don't know. You tell me how much having the right answer is worth when you've got a $30,000 deal on the line. You tell me. <laughs> all right everybody i love you let's get into the next question all right here's the next question seller financing allows the investor to a generate rental income from tenants b defer capital gains through a 1031 exchange c sell the property without the need for a real estate agent or d act as the lender and receive regular mortgage payments hmm i'm gonna let you think about this one seller financing allows the investor to a generate rental income from tenants b defer capital gains taxes through a 1031 exchange c sell the property without the need for a real estate agent act as the lender and receive regular mortgage payments You got to think about it. Whew, wow. This is supposed to be master's degree level. Okay. What do you think? Is it? Well, you definitely can't just quickly run through these. You got to give it a little thought at least. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. This one here, I've decided. What do you think? Okay. You guys, time's up. All right. Time is up. Seller financing allows the investor to, and you guys put some answers here quite a few variations we got a d we got a c and d all his options in the chat here okay. seller financing would would a work generate rental income from, it would not be a because in seller financing you're and this is talking about this is actually referring to 
um, the exit strategy of seller financing. So maybe you pick up a house subject to, and then you turn around and sell it so using seller financing. Okay, now that I've put it in perspective for you, okay, now it makes more sense. All right, so it, it's, it can't be A because you're not, there's no tenants. You're, you're selling the house with seller financing, all right? Is it B, deferring capital gains through a 1031 exchange? No, it's not, no. C, sell a property without the need for a real estate agent. Mm, that sounds like that could be the one. Yes, that's, is that true? Is that is that what a seller financing allows you as the investor to do when you're using it as an exit strategy yourself? Are you, are you able to save on the realtor's commissions? Yes, you are. D, act as the bank or act as the lender and receive regular mortgage payments. Ding, 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 ding. That's it right there. That's it. All right. Okay. So the answer is D. C would not have been wrong. It's just simply not the best answer that there is. Okay. So let's go ahead and pop into the next question. The next question, which strategy involves assigning or selling the option to purchase a property to another buyer? Hmm. Buy and hold. Let's see here. A, buy and hold. B, wholesaling. C, lease purchase. Or D, Section 8 rentals. Let's read it again. Which strategy involves assigning or selling the option to purchase a property to another buyer? A, buy and hold. B, wholesaling. C, lease purchase. Or D, Section 8 rentals. This one's a little tricky too, actually. I mean, I think we all know the answer. Well, I don't know. We got we got people putting different answers in the chat, and I and I can't disagree with why you would. That's pretty. That's pretty much true, right there. That it could be maybe a couple of these. Okay, what could it be? We're going to discuss it in five seconds. Okay. All right. So which one of these strategies involves assigning and selling the option? Buy and hold's not it. B, wholesaling. Definitely. Yes. C, lease purchase. <laughs> some of you are so smart and you caught on. See, I tried to fool you with some of these and and uh, this is one that's a little, it's a little tricky. It could be C. It could be. Because remember, in a lease purchase or a lease option or a lease option to purchase, <laughs> all right, it's all about the same, okay? It could be that you're assigning this to a tenant buyer. It could be C. The truest answer, however, is B. Okay, all right, good. How'd you do? How'd you do? Did you think through that one pretty good? All right, I, I hope so. Uh, this next one here is dealing with Section 8 or government subsidized rentals. They provide investors with A, tax, def tax incentives for affordable housing programs, B, rental income from corporate housing clients, C, access to short-term rental markets, or D, steady income from reliable government payments. Hmm. See, I thought I knew the answer and then I ran across another answer and I was like, maybe it's that answer. Did that happen to you on this one? Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. I think, I think it, if you're thinking through this one, answer by answer, a couple of them kind of pop up at you. Yes. 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 I see it in the chat. You guys see what I'm talking about. Okay. Here we go. Section 8 or government subsidized rentals provide investors with the correct answer is not A. Why not? The answer is not A because Section 8 or government subsidized rental programs do not provide tax incentives to the landlord rather the correct answer would be D steady rental income from reliable government payments ok 
Okay. It could be A, maybe. I'm not sure. Somebody look it up. See, isn't this cool? See, now we got questions. Some <laughs> We got questions now about how does Section 8 work? Do, is there tax incentives involved in Section 8? See, if you're interested in this as an exit strategy, mastering this as an exit strategy, this is a question you'll want to, you know, you'll want to seek some of these answers out. Yeah. And you'll see, then you'll know answers to questions that we don't know because you're that smart. <laughs> and then we'll be dumb. And then I'll have you on my show and you can tell everybody all the smart stuff, you know. Okay. I would like that. Actually, that would be really cool. Okay. So. The answer that we're going to go with here, though, is we're going to go with D, steady rental income from liable government, reliable government payments. In other words, the rent is eleven hundred a month. The government is sending the landlord eight fifty, and the tenant is supposed to pay three hundred a month directly themselves um, for the rent. Still, okay. So that's how that works. All right. Next question. Why might an investor target properties near colleges and universities for student housing? A, higher rental income potential. B, lower vacancy rates. C, long-term appreciation. Or D, access to government subsidies. Why might an investor target properties near colleges or universities? Why would we think about student housing? Remember I told a story, I did one of these. Yeah, man, in Lawrence, Kansas, right near KU. And I'll tell you the reason why I did it. Two reasons. One of the reasons I did it is even is not even listed here. But one of them is. Okay. All right. So the answer to this question, why might an investor target properties near colleges and universities for student housing is A, higher rental income potential. Okay. You actually might have higher vacancy rates. So B would not be the right one. C, long-term appreciation. This is kind of the reason why I wanted to do it because I had a short-term dream for a minute that I was going to, my, my, one of my kids was going to want to go to this school and I was going to have a house that I was going to own and it would be pretty much paid off by the time they went to school there. All right. So that was, that was another reason that would kind of be C in a way. D access to government subsidies. The correct answer, the best answer. A. A. The correct answer is A. Okay. Good job, everybody. Good job. The next question. Affordable housing programs involve A. Leasing properties to governments, agencies. B. Renting properties to corporate clients. C. Providing housing for low-income individuals or families. Or D, converting properties into assisted living facilities. Hmm. Affordable housing programs involve leasing properties to government agencies, renting properties to corporate clients, providing housing for low-income individuals or families, or converting properties into assisted living facilities. This is fun, y'all. I'm having a good time. I'm having a good time. We're having a good time. We're having a good time. Like, <laughs> like comedian Dusty Slay. He's, he's funny. All right. Affordable housing programs involve. The correct answer is C. Providing housing for low income individuals or families. <laughs> Affordable housing programs like Section 8. Okay, like we were just talking about, like we were just discussing. Affordable housing programs could be like Section 8, for example. Okay, doesn't have to be Section 8, but, but that's probably the most popular one that we're aware of in our world today. All right, so 
Here's the next question. How'd you do on that one? Pretty good? Pretty good? All right, let's put it in the chat. Hey, thank you guys. Stretch if you need to. Let's stretch. Here we go. Corporate housing or furnished rentals cater to A, vacation rental clients, B, low-income individuals or families, C, government subsidized tenants, or D, business travelers or individuals in need of temporary housing. Corporate housing or furnished rentals cater to what type of character, right? That's what it's asking. Hmm. This one here, you, 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 you guys already know. You've already devastated this one. All right. So corporate housing or furnished rentals cater to, the answer is D, business travelers or individuals in need of temporary housing. Yeah, great. So just like the story of the travel nurse. Yep, that's right. Okay. Here's the next question. How can investors leverage the equity in their property using a HELOC? A, uh, let's clear this here and start. Uh, oops, we're going backwards now. <laughs> I gotta figure the thing out. I hit the wrong button here. Okay. How can investors leverage the equity in their property using a HELOC? A. Borrow against the property's value for further investments. B. Sell the property and reinvest in a 1031 exchange. C. Renovate the property using available funds. Or D. Rent out the property for additional income. You guys are smart now. Look at you. Putting more than one good answer in there. <laughs> you guys are like, yeah, these are tricky in the sense that like there's more than one right answer. But, you know, while there's more than one right answer, like I had a professor that might say this one time to me. <laughs> he said, uh, while there's more than one right answer, there's only one really, truly best answer. That's the one you should have picked. That's why you've got a D on your test. Okay. <laughs> all right all right true story true story all right are you guys ready the answer is you would it, an investor would leverage the equity in their property using a HELOC a to borrow against the property's value for further investments okay yeah could you when it says their property it, it's meaning the property that they live in okay so would an investor want to borrow money on a HELOC to do C, renovate the property that he's living in and use the available funds? Perhaps, perhaps, or you really run a risk of spending way too much money because you're emotionally attached and then not being able to get it. So it would not maybe be a good investment strategy. All right, just throwing that out there, okay? Just throwing that out there. Okay, next question. Assisted living conversion involves converting single family residences into A, student housing facilities, B, sober living housing, C, vacation rentals, or D, section eight rentals. This is a horrible question. Horrible question. But you guys are thinking through it, see? You, and you're giving me what I believe now to be the right stuff. The right stuff. Uh, the, the right answers here. The, I think, let's not do the timer on this one because this question sucks. Um, because really, there's no real correct answer here. Okay, assisted living would be assisted living. Sober living would be sober living. However, in lack of a good answer, if 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 it were, if E none of the above, Jason Richter, if that were an option, that would be the best answer. However, due to the fact that there's no good answer here, the best answer of the bad answers would be B. Okay. Uh <laughs> 
<laughs> assisted living student. Yeah, it could be. It could be student. <laughs> that that's funny. It's it's funny. But I believe the the correct answer would be none of the above. But but in in lieu of of not having that as an option, B. Okay. <laughs> Jason says he needs a drink after that one. <laughs> All right. Okay. Assisted living is for seniors. That's correct. Right. Okay. Sober living is for people who want to be sober. Okay. Next question here. All right. Let's spice it up a little bit. What are the key factors to consider when evaluating a property for development or new construction? A, market demand, construction costs, and zoning regulations. B, rental income potential, tenant screening, and property management. C, property condition, renovation costs, and market comparables. Or D, capital gains, taxes, financing, and exits. And you guys are like, whoa, 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 whoa. Right? What does that mean? What does that mean? These are all really big. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, what's the answer? Think about it. What are the key factors to consider when evaluating a property for development or new construction? Market demand, construction costs, and zoning regulations. Rental income potential, tenant screening, and property management. Property condition, renovation costs, and marketing, market comparables. Capital gains, taxes, financing, and exits, or exit strategies. <laughs> this question sucks, man. Woo! This was hard too. This is like I don't know. I, I give up. Uh, you know, this, was, this one here is making my head like the little hamster wheel in my brain, in my head here that the little hamster runs on. Yeah, it needs oil. You know? like <laughs> squeak, 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 squeak. That's the hamster wheel in my brain right now with this question. <laughs> what are we gonna do? I think the answer is all of them. <laughs> the answer is all of them. Tell me which one of these do you think are not important? Now, when we're evaluating a property for development or new construction, what are we talking about? We're talking about build outs. We're talking about tear downs and rebuilds. We're talking about building new, new, new structures, new houses, new homes, new multifamilies. Which one of these things is not important? A, B, C, or D. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say the correct answer is all of the above, but that's not an option, is it? All right, so <clears throat> in lack of a good answer, I would have chosen A, okay, which is market demand, construction costs, and zoning regulations. But I believe the answer to be all of the above, all right, okay? All right, so let's let's jump into this. That was, that was a tough one, all right? Here, here's the next question right here, everybody. What is subject to in real estate transactions? Is it A, financing arrangement where the buyer pays the existing mortgage of the seller? B, negotiating strategy to secure a discounted purchase price? B, conditions set by the buyer to proceed with the purchase? Or D, a clause that protects the buyer? What is subject to in real estate transactions? Put it in the chat. All right, you guys are popping in the right answer. All right, good job, good job. The answer is A. The correct answer is A. That is right. Okay, so in a subject to transaction, the, it's a financing arrangement where you, the investor buyer, are going to pay the existing mortgage of the seller. Okay, good job. Good job. Next question. How does a wraparound mortgage and real estate investing work? Is it A? The buyer obtains a second mortgage from the seller to cover the equity. B. The buyer assumes the existing mortgage of the seller and makes additional payments. C. The seller provides financing and holds a wraparound mortgage as a lien. Hmm. See, this one makes you think. Because you want to say something, but then you're like, nah. Nah. You want to say it's one of these, and then you're like, nah. 
<laughs> nah. All right. Okay. I believe the correct answer is, how does a wraparound mortgage work in real estate investing? Is it A, the buyer obtains a second mortgage from the seller to cover the equity? No. That would be a seller carry back. B, the buyer assumes the existing mortgage of the seller and makes additional payments. That would be, it sounds like that would be a subject to seller carry back hybrid. So the correct answer, the best answer would be C, the seller provides financing and holds a wraparound mortgage as a lien. Okay, how'd you do? How did you do? Did you do okay? All right, that was a tough one. Okay. Last question, last question of the night. What is the benefit of seller carryback arrangement in a real estate transaction? Is it A, allows the buyer to finance equity owed to the seller? B, enables the buyer to defer capital gains taxes? Or C, provides the seller with immediate cash from the sale of the property? Or D, eliminates the need for a down payment? Hmm. <laughs> this is a good one too. <laughs> these are some pretty good ones. Some of them are pretty good. Some of these were really bad tonight. <laughs> and some of them are pretty good. What is the benefit of a seller carryback arrangement in a real estate transaction? Is it A, allows the buyer to finance the equity owed to the seller, enables the buyer to defer capital gains taxes, provides seller with immediate cash from the sale, or D, eliminates the need for down payment? Hmm, this is a toughie. This is a tough one, but time's up. We have a lot of answers here in the chat that say A is the correct answer. What do you guys, um, are you guys really sure about that? I mean, are you, are you stuck on that one for sure? Because <clears throat> let's go through this here. Benefit of a seller carryback arrangement in a real estate transaction. Could it be A, allows the buyer to finance equity owed to the seller? Well, it certainly could be that. It certainly can be A. Could it be B, enables the buyer to defer capital gains tax? Probably not. C, provides the seller with immediate cash from the sale. No, because the seller's carrying back the node, he's not going to get all his cash up front. He's going to get a payment. D, eliminates the need for a down payment. Ah. 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 Now you're starting to think like a transaction engineer. Because the answer is A or D. All right. Beautiful, beautiful job. All right, everybody. Hey, good job tonight. I think everybody did great. I could tell from the answers in the chat that everybody was kicking some butt on this. And you guys are really coming along in your knowledge and uh, your experience here with, with the information. And it's time to step out now and talk to motivated homeowners. That's right. It's time to get out there and start getting some action going, some deals Talking to some motivated homeowners that want to say yes to your question of, hey, would you do a seller carry back? Would you take two to three percent down and then allow us to make payments for X amount of months? What if somebody said yes to that this week for you? What would that do for you? What would that do for your business? What would that change for you if you could ask a question that a homeowner would actually say yes to? Oh my goodness, I'm offering right now to take on two apprentices in the month of August. Today is July the 26th. I'm taking on two apprentices right now in the month of August. That's it. And our apprentice program, that means we're working leads. We've got leads. I'll help you build the machine. This is the fast track. And then we'll work some leads together. Okay, and this is called the Shut Up Money Shortcut. If you're interested in being an apprentice of mine, this is really working with me tight, right? It's a, it's a 60 plus day program and it's pretty serious, right? I'll work with you on getting into it if you want to get into that, but you need to hit me up at realestatewholesalersclub.com or shutupmoney.com and we'll go get us a deal under contract, you and me, okay? We'll go get us under a uh, deal under contract and, uh, and then it'll stop being theory for you. It'll start being fact for you. Wouldn't that be nice if real estate investing stopped being theory for you and it just became fact for you? Hey, what if you were like these people? I'll see you next week. Yeah, mother
I got spy light. Hold on. Are you serious? I'm dead. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, when I come on this <laughs> camera, I'm about to go down. <laughs> bring that <laughs> out, Justin. Reach for it, Justin. Don't be scared. Reach and bring that mother <laughs> down. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. So I ended up making 3874 Justin here, and if you've got REI Reply and you want to start getting one to seven motivated seller leads a day like I do, or if you don't have REI Reply and you would like to have REI Reply and have it making for you one to seven leads every day like I have, then here's an opportunity for you. I will build out your REI Reply to look just like mine. In fact, I will load for sell by owner data into it for you as well, and I will return it to you making one to seven leads every single day and also filtering out all the bad ones and like kind of showing you the good ones right here on a silver platter all right if that sounds good to you then below the video you know what to do see you on the inside bye bye